Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Fish and Grubs. Today, today, folks, we're at the office, and today we're going over all the things you need to get out ice fishing. This is not a beginner's ice fishing video. This is for people that have gone fishing and want to actually get out there and do this a lot. Now, if you want me to do a beginner's ice fishing video, please let me know in the comments. You have things that you like to use that I haven't mentioned. Please talk about them uh, down below. Tell me what you guys like to use out there. Uh, because again, this is my third season, but ice fishing is my thing. I absolutely love it. I've always hated winter. So to finally find something that I absolutely enjoy running around on the ice just flags going up all over the place it feels like christmas all winter um so that's why i do it and i'm at having so much fun it is the reason why i started my channel my first day ice fishing i caught a four pound bass i caught my personal best at the time and it remained my personal best until midsummer. God. <laughs> yeah! You want me to get one with that? <laughs> Ice fishing has a special place in my heart. I, it, it is uh, something that I thoroughly enjoy. And to all of you people out there that knock it, we don't care. We don't care what you say. We don't give a rat's buttle what you think about ice fishing. Because to us, it's just about being out there in the elements, having fun. Regardless of it's a game of chess, a game of checkers, or parcheesy freaking mousetrap, we don't care. It's fun as could be. And we're out there catching fish. So that's why we do it. And it's the only time of the year I use live bait, um, for the most part. Every once in a while, I'll bust out a live bait little challenge thing, and it's fun to do every every once in a while. I don't mind it, but for the most part, I don't use live bait. And in the winter time, I do. So that is one thing to also think about. And there's a lot of people out there that I know that don't. They just go out and jake. That's all they do. Go out and jake, and that's perfectly okay too. That that actually is, takes a lot more skill than what I do. But I'm out there to have fun, you know, and to give, give you guys some entertaining video hopefully too, because usually a lot of silly shit happens out on the ice. So without any further ado, since this is my second time doing this take because the last time I was pretty much halfway through talking about all the uh, clothing I like to wear and how I like to layer, and I noticed it wasn't recording. So anyways, we got the boots. We talked about the boots. If you didn't see the video about the boots and the jacket, please click the link above. Go check that out because uh, we kind of get a little more in depth about the boots and the jacket. We're definitely not going to get in depth about pretty much anything. Today's about uh, all the things that I have that I am going to use this year ice fishing and uh, how I like to layer up and we'll talk about a couple little things then we can get more in detail in a couple other videos I have a bunch of new traps six of them in a box and we're gonna open that up and show you at the end of the video we're gonna go over that and so I'm gonna go over how to line them and what I like to do and get a little in-depth about that as well For right now let's just go over everything we get a lot to go over we're gonna get it done. First things first, I like to start off with my base layers. And my base layers are pretty much the same uh, all the time. It's pretty much what I just wear when I'm at home comfy. And that is boxers and a t-shirt. I just, I don't know, 
it is my most comfortable me. Then the next layer is going to be a pair of long johns. I got these, these are real trees and they're inside out. All right, I got these uh, at Walmart. They're like in the hunting section. Get yourself some long johns to go uh, on as a base layer. These are to wick the sweat away from your body, folks. And that is what the base layer should pretty much be about. It's not about warmth. It's about pulling sweat away from your body because your body everywhere sweats. So, long johns, thin, that goes on first. After the long johns, I go with a pretty much a regular pair of socks. I wanna upgrade to socks that wick the sweat away just a little bit better, but these, for me right now, this is what I got. And uh, I just, you know, nice thin layer of sock. That goes on up and over the pants, right? Next in that layer is a silky, wicking the sweat away from your body. A lot of people will go with this without this. I just, I, I gotta have a t-shirt. Oh, so I'm, I'm weird. I'm a weird guy. Just more comfortable for me. But anyways, silky, pulling the sweat away. Awesome stuff. And that's going on over the pants because we do have the next pair of pants. Um, and it depends on how cold it is outside as to what the next layer for me is going to be. It's either going to be sweatpants, if it's not super cold. If it's getting a little bit colder than sweatpants, I'll do uh, some like flannel pajama pants because they're super comfy and they're nice and warm. You can get wool. You can do whatever you want with your pants, but that next layer is going to be a little bit more bulky than the first layer. You're going to go for warmth here. You're going to tuck the silky shirt in to the pants okay and we're just layering in ways so that air just can't get in this pair of socks the wool socks these are going to go up and over literally up and over your sweatpants second pair of socks with these boots i'm probably not going to need a third pair i do have a tiny bit of room uh, in the cavity with my feet in here so if I do need a third pair I will be able to use one but uh, for for right now at this time of year especially I think I'm gonna be good with just the um, with just the two pair but we'll see about that our second layer is all about warmth first layer is all about pulling sweat away so personally I've done it a couple different ways uh, since I got this new ascent jacket but the most comfortable for me right now is putting on this next. I'll put on my, like the inner liner, the fleece liner of my jacket, I took out. And I'm putting that on before I put on my hoodie. Because I love having a hoodie as well. It's kind of like a t-shirt for me. It's like my other t-shirt. Just, I just don't leave home with that one, usually. So, the hoodie will go, go on over the fleece liner from my Ascent jacket. Now, the, there's two reasons for this. One, because I love to have a hoodie on. Two, because if I get too warm with the jacket, I can take that off and I still have a hood uh, on my top layer. I could also, if I'm too warm, but the wind is picked up, I can take the hoodie off really quick and still have my base layer uh, fleece jacket on and just put my ascent right back on so there's a couple reasons why I'm going with the hoodie over the fleece in line all right after the hoodie that's when I toss my bibs on so I have the Fravil I believe these are the i3 or the i4 I can't remember Nicole got these um, but they are getting sliced up from my spikes. We'll show you the spikes in a minute, but they are, yeah, they're mangled because uh, I run around too much on the ice and I'm a goofy bastard and I've just, uh, yeah, it happens. Looking into getting the uh, ascent bibs instead of these, because um, they float too. They're dope. Of course, after the bibs, we're gonna go with the jacket. Again, check out the jacket video. And that's that. Um, Again, there's a couple other little things. I couldn't find my face shield anywhere. I've used it a couple times over the past few weeks. It's my lucky face shield. 
uh, too. It's the one TK gave me, so I need to freaking find that thing because it's my D10. And it actually has two face shields. I, I double up on my face shields. Um, it's awesome in the winter time, cold months. Because half the time it's not on my face, it's just here, covering this small portion of my neck, keeping me toasty. It's like my scarf because I don't like scarves. All right, now, of course, we're also going to need the beanie. And here we have our freaking Sub-Zero Ice Team beanie. And this thing's probably the nicest beanie I've owned. Uh, mostly because it's the warmest. It's got like, it's like a normal beanie, but then on the inside, um, it's got a double layer. And it's super soft on the inside. Regular looking on the outside, really soft and really super warm on the inside. This jack, this jacket, this hat is phenomenal. This is another must. This is for fishing, ice fishing, and life in general. You need a headlamp. This one I got like the red, the purple, uh, and two tiers of regular light. But this is huge. This, this is you know just how I feel. You guys can do your own thing, but this is just me. When you are ice fishing, you get a designated spot pretty much. Now, I do move around like crazy. If the fish aren't biting in one spot, I'll freaking, I got an electric auger now, we'll just drill holes all over the goddamn pond. But one of the things I like to do is get to the pond before the sun comes up, or the lake, or wherever I'm going, before the sun comes up, have all my holes drilled for when the sun starts to come up. And there's two reasons for that. One, I get bit a lot. Sometimes before the sun even starts showing, it'd still be pitch black and the freaking flags start going up like crazy. It's happened to me a few times. But a lot of the times, right when that first light starts to hit the ice, the fish turn on like crazy and they start biting like crazy. And then once the sun's up, it slows down. So it is one of my favorite times of day to fish. So I like to get there. Um, the second reason is because I, I'm claiming my spot. This is my spot. You know what I mean? So I get there, and that is now my area for the rest of the day if it's on fire. If not, I'm moving. But here's the other thing. I fish on the weekdays. So I usually am one of the only people out where I am anywhere, and I absolutely love that. Unless I'm going with friends, I just, I don't know. Fishing for me is more about just being in nature. I don't... I hate when like people come to the body of water that I'm fishing and then like set up their traps right next to me when we're on a giant body of water. And it's like, dude, like, dude, are you kidding me? I came over, there's all these people in one spot. I come over to this other spot and then you come over and park your ass right next to me when there's a million other spots. It happens. Um, it's hard to like just bite your tongue and, you know, be like, Burr. but. That's how it is. And in some places of the country, I know it's way worse. So I'm a little bitch for the most part for even saying anything about it. But I just, I like to, I like to be alone when I'm out on the ice. Even when I'm with my friends, I'm like, we're our group. We like to just, you know, it's like a camping in the woods. I like to just be far away. I'm not somebody that likes to camp up on people. I digress. Batteries, 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 batteries. We have batteries for freaking everything. These are my two um, Strike Master Auger batteries, which is funny. One of them was still fully charged from last year. They're fully charged. I was like, this is great. So, luckily for me, I have this little indicator button on mine. I can just press the button and see if they're charged. These are both fully charged. And I plugged them both in and made sure um, one of them wasn't fully charged, so I got it up to speed. We also need to test the auger. We'll get there. So let's get these boots out of here. Oh, yes. We went there. Last year when I got the auger from Bass Pro Shops, it was the fourth item I got from them. The first three had issues. The first one I got was this flasher. Just not this one. This is a tier above the one I first got. That one, there's these tiny little screws in it. I used it once. I got home, the whole top had fallen off, and the screws are like 
the tiniest screws ever. Gnomes put this thing together with microscopic tools. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, how do I... I can't fix this. I don't have, like... The, first of all, like, to even, like, pick... It was ridiculous. So, I took it back to Bass Pro. I was like, can I just return this and get the nicer one? This one here. I wanted to get the one that my buddy Jerry had. I thought I did. I was wrong. So then I grabbed this one. When I got home, I opened this one up. Didn't even get to use it once. The battery is super heavy, right? And it like, you know, it sits on the bottom. The, one of the cords, which is, the, there's a huge amount of cordage in here. One of the cords that connects uh, the power to the battery was sitting underneath the battery and it had been completely severed while in the shipping process probably. So I was pissed. I went back to Bass Pro and I was like, listen, I'm taking this as a sign. I don't, I don't even want to get a flasher right now. You know what? I think the mo more important thing for me is is to get an auger, which it was. I was actually, and one of my friends was telling me that, and I was like, God, but I want a flasher because they're just so much fun. It's like playing a video game out there. It's actually going to really improve my jigging game, I do believe. But, anyways, the flasher broken. I want an auger. What are you doing? <laughs> You're so creepy. Sorry. Nicole, ladies and gentlemen. This is not live. It is live. We're live right now. No, but I am going to put that in. What? Yeah, it's still recording. Anything you say or do can be... <laughs> yes, I love you more when you're not making noise. You should put that in the video. Everyone can see how nice and lovely. Okay, I love you. Okay. Don't make noise. Stop. Don't wake the kids up for 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna wake them up now. Bye. All right, so back to our regularly scheduled program. Where was I? Okay, I got, I just returned the second broken flasher. Second broken flasher. Now, the first time I used the flasher, I think I made a video. Yeah, it was the YouTube monetization rant. You guys can check that out. I'll leave it either up above or down below. I don't know how many times I want to say that, so. This one might be below and not just above. I don't know. Anyways, I digress again. So first flasher, take it back because it just fell apart. Second flasher, never even got to use it. Only got to use the first one once. Second one, cord severed. Like it looked like somebody took a really jagged pair of scissors because it must have just been sitting on top of the freaking wire when it got shipped. Because it looked like somebody just like, like a Wolverine ripped it apart or something it was just it was a disaster so I took that one back and I was like I need nogger and I didn't really have much more money to spend at the time uh, so I got the gas auger and I took that out for the first time and right now actually this video has been doing really well because I took the gas auger I returned it they actually gave me the auger that I got for a little less than what they have it advertised for because of the amount of times I had been back and forth. The gas auger wouldn't work. I did, every, I was literally on the phone with Chris, Mr. Tightlines, linked above, below, to the side, and wherever. Mr. Tightlines was on the phone with me, going over, every, he's good with small engines, so he was going over every little thing I could possibly do to try and get this thing to work. I was letting it sit for a while, because obviously you didn't want to, you know, over, I went at it for, well over an hour, almost two hours. Everything possible to try and get this engine to work and it just wouldn't. So I called up Bass Pro, I told them my issues and they were like, come on down, we'll take care of you. And I went down and I got this Strike Master 40 volt lithium ion auger. This thing is a freaking workhorse. I have two batteries. Most of the time I don't get into the second battery. But if I do, it's usually been a day where we've moved a ton. 
Because with ice fishing, it's all about searching out grounds where there's fish. So if you're in a spot where there's no fish, you gotta move. Um, and if you have a hand auger, that sucks. So this thing has made my life so much easier, so much more fun. When I start to click on the handle, there's lights. There's lights on both sides, here and on the other side. Those lights light up as soon as you start to touch the handle. That way, if you're doing it early in the morning, you can see everything that you're drilling. It's This thing is freaking insane. 10 inch holes, absolute beast. So we got that. This year, we were looking at things to get for ice fishing, and this was one of my top choices. I got this before my boots and my jacket and everything. This is the Showdown Digital Fish Finder. And it's just like a flasher, only instead of it being in like a circle, it's in a straight line. It's just so much easier to read for me. I don't know, it just works. Uh, the couple of times I used Jerry's, I was in love. His is amazing. Um, and then I saw Millican Fishing using the same exact flasher a couple weeks later in his videos. And dude, I mean, the thing is, it's, per it's perfect. I just think it's, in my opinion, it works better for me. If you like the little round flasher, go get yourself one. But a flasher is key if you wanna start jigging for fish while you're waiting for your flags to go off. Sometimes it's slow and uh, jigging up just a bunch of perch or bluegill or sometimes you get something big in the jig rod. Um, I've seen some people catch some big smallmouth. It, I mean, you have fun jigging. Chris uses gets it's like crazy. He loves them. Anyways. Next. A couple days ago, because of all the snow we've been getting, I put the boat away. I actually rearranged some stuff so if we do want to take the boat out, if the, the roads clear up and there's no salt on the roads for a few days because I really just don't want to get rust all over my nice trailer because it's old already. So if there's nothing on the roads, we can get the boat out now. I moved, I rearranged things in the uh, garage so that the boat can go in and out a little bit easier. I still have a little more to do to make that something that's extremely efficient, but we're getting there. So we put the boat away and we got the shelter out. We looked at it and we put it in the truck. And the reason why you want to look at the shelter is, well, my buddy Chris found out uh, and I found out through him that apparently uh, rodents like shelters. So you want to make sure no rodents got into your shelter or ripped any holes in it. If they did, you want to patch it up and, and take care of business, uh, try and fix things before you take it out for the first time because it would really suck to go out on the ice when it's freezing cold uh, and try and put up your shelter and then you realize you actually have issues. So you want to fix and uh, tune to the issues before you actually get on the ice. That's key. And that's actually why we're doing this video right now. What the hell is that noise out there? sucks living on a, a busy road. So we got uh, some extra propane from last year. We also have our buddy heater. This thing is the best, buddy. So with the buddy, we want to test it out. So hit the pilot. Pilot works. Turn that fricker on. And that sucker gets super hot. Woo. like red hot. These are safe to use inside too, which is dope. Uh, but this is a portable Mr. Betty heater. Portable buddy. This thing's freaking great. I have a two person shelter, it heats it. It heats it too much at times, but we are pumped for it. Uh, once I get a four wheeler and can pull more, I will probably get a big propane tank that I can hook up to this instead of using these throwaway little mini propane tanks. But what's great about these is I just found my jet boil. So on the ice this year, you can put this sucker on, 
boil us some water, cook, make some fish stew. But we can uh, we can do some stuff with this. Yep, it's basically like a little stove. I think there's something we can get for this so we can cook on top of it too. If not, we're gonna get a little cooking stove as well because we already have some good cooking gear for outdoors. Got this little sucker here. This thing's great. You get a little frying pan and a little little pot. So the heater works. That is key. That's something, again, you're gonna wanna make sure all your stuff works before getting out on the ice. The five gallon bucket. This is an ice fisherman's best friend. This is my go around and sit down wherever I want. If I'm going jigging uh, away from the shelter, I bought this swivel seat, I believe at the county stores. And so it, I can like move around all over the place. This just sits right on top. These are the spikes I was talking about. These things are insane. This is something every ice fisherman should have if they're going out all the time. You got to have spikes. You don't need to get these crazy ones. These were given to me by a good friend, Mr. Travis Crandlemere. Thank you so much, dude. These things have been saviors. I have probably lost out on a hundred or so falls because of these. But they've also made me fall quite a few times because I'm an idiot and I like running around and they've caught on my bibs, like I was telling you earlier, and sliced them wide open while putting me face first into the ice. So, be careful. Don't be a dumbass like me. Spikes, get them. Right now, I have three aerators. Uh, one of them, or maybe even two of these are Chris's. And one of them's my, I can't even remember whose is what at this point. I have no idea. But they all need new batteries. And then a couple of the hoses. Now those are obviously used to keep, um, to keep your live bait alive. So we also have two buckets. Um, those are actually outside. One of them's mine, one of them's Chris's. And they are to put your shiners in. Uh, I actually have a bunch of Chris's stuff right now Because at the end of the year we kind of just smashed it all together metal scoop This is huge after you drill your holes if There's still a bunch of ice laying around or if you're going up to your holes clearing some ice You're gonna want one of these mine's janky. I need to get a new one They have like the thicker one with like an ice pick at the end. That's the one to get folks Don't get the plastic crappy bullshit ones Do not get this. This is just stupid. Do not waste your money on this garbage. Uh, it's a floppy mess. It doesn't even, like it's just, I mean it works. It ain't gonna last and it doesn't work well. This, you can like use it for other things. You can bang through the eye. It's hefty. Even my piece of crap one is hefty. It's awesome. So get yourself one. All right, so I just bought these. You need these. So this here is an old school ice fishing trap. This is what I use most of the time. Uh, I just got new ones. They're very different. We're gonna go over those next. But this is the trap. You set it up like so. This is, moves freely, but you wanna move it into this position and lock it in with that. And that is gonna, you know, not fall into the hole. Then, when you get it straight up like this, you lock this one into place. Okay? This is the lucky tip up. So, I go with a 1 0 Kamikatsu or Trocar or anything. 1 0 circle hook or this year I'm going to try just their wacky hooks because they're pretty much the same freaking thing. You can get live bait hooks, whatever you want. I use one O's because I'm going for bass. You can use other stuff. From the hook, I have a leader that goes to a barrel swivel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Barrel swivel. 
get yourself some barrel swivels. Eagle claw, whatever. There's nicer ones out there. These ones will be just fine. Barrel swivels. So, hook, leader, I use fluorocarbon. Barrel swivel. Fluorocarbon leader. It's a little bullet weight. Also makes noise. Now, this bullet weight goes down to where the barrel swivel is, allowing your live bait to swim around, but to still be kind of in a zone that you pick. If you give this leader, uh, a, if you do a really long leader here, you're gonna, the fish is gonna have more room to move around in whatever zone you give him. So if you find a longer leader works for you, use it. Shorter leader, use it. Some people just go straight braid all the way out. Some people don't even use these bullet weights. I like to, because it puts the bait right where I want it. So, then I go to a uni to uni knot hand line going to the leader. That goes to the barrel swivel, goes to the hook, the bullet weight in between, yeah. Okay, and there's one more thing that I like to do. Before I tie that uni to uni knot on my hand line, I'll put a button. A little button there. The button slides freely. Go right through two holes so it can move freely. Now what happens is is I'll mark where the depth is. Then I'll take right where you know bottom is and I'll move up an arm's length so that I'm that far off the bottom when I drop the bait down. Or however, you know, whatever that you can play with the distance. If I don't get hit right there, that's when I'll start moving the button around. But I always move the button so that if I do get hit, I can put it down in that same zone the next time. And that's how I set up my flags. This one's going nowhere, folks. This one will be up first every time. Even though I have six new flags, until this thing is broken in the ground, this will be in a hole when I'm out. Sucks when it's wicked windy because it's uh, testy. It goes off pretty easy. But uh, my uncle gave me this flag, and I've caught almost every good fish I've ever caught on this flag. This thing is old. It's worn, and it's freaking amazing. Um, I bought a bunch of new flags last year. These red ones that I got online. Every single one of them are broken. If you can see... It's this little piece that sticks out here, and that's to knock it's that little pin there. It knocks the pin, knocking the flag off its little spot, putting the flag up. Every one of these red ones that I got online have this little metal piece that's on the spool is gone. So I'm going to jimmy rig those after I get all the line off the spools and get them onto the new traps and, you know, make these backup traps. But I've seen people do it. I know it can be done, but I got new traps. So I don't have to deal with that BS. So that's how we set up the traps real quick. We got a jig and pole. We need to get a new reel because mine fell apart. A little rod holder goes right on the bucket. In case you want to leave uh, leave your rod like just sitting in the in the water, sometimes dead sticking a little jig, you get nailed. It's actually pretty funny how that works. Again, don't forget your sounders. You put them right on the hook, drop it down to the bottom, find the bottom, mark it with your button. That's key right there. Mark them with your button. So I have a ton of traps right here. A lot of them are Chris's. I need to separate his from mine. Some of them I don't even remember whose is what, but. We get all that, put this away real quick, and we're going to open up the box and see what our new traps look like. Because that's all we got left. All right, folks, we've had this box for like a week and a half, two weeks, I don't even, we've had it for a while. We have yet to open it. We saved it for this very moment. So 
sick. Guaranteed against freezing. So we got these are dope. The Polar Extreme. No. Extreme Polar Therm. Tip up Brimball. I don't know what the Brimball is. This sucker. It's got light stick holders. That's awesome. They each have a mini tackle box. So in each, you can leave a couple hooks, a couple buttons, a couple weights, a little bit of line. That's awesome. Oh, let's crack this baby. Gave me a fishing light, folks? What is this? I'm gonna open it. That's awesome. It sticks right into that little hole. There's two of them. So you can put two light sticks. So if you are night fishing, you can see where your flags are at least to go check them. That's awesome. All right, so. This is so cool. This is just like quality. You can tell it's quality. A little tackle box. Flags up. Oh, that's sick. Look at the size of that. That the flags extend, folks. The flags extend. That's insane. Alright, so fish. Holes. Flag goes up. Fish. Holes. Flag. Pops up. Giant flag. This flag is uh, as long as my arm. That's huge. This thing is amazing. Way cooler than I uh, had expected. Well, folks, that is it. We need to set these traps up. Um, I'm going to pull line off some of the broken flags first. After I've gotten all the line off the broken flags, we're going to go to county stores and get a couple spools of what they have uh, for the hand line stuff. It's like 10 bucks for 100 yards, so. Each remaining trap will need one, most likely. This is sick. Super pumped for ice fishing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, pretty much it. Uh, I do have some new hooks, some new bullet weights, and some, uh, some new barrel swivels if I need them. I do need to go pick up some more buttons because uh, buttons are key. We're gonna set up these tip-ups and that's that. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification because we definitely have a ton of stuff coming up. We're gonna do some uh, reviews on these new traps once we get used to them. We're gonna do a full-on review on the auger, a full-on review on a few other little things that we got going on. So if you're into the reviews, if you like The Office, hit the subscribe button and we got a ton of ice fishing. I'm gonna be going out as much as Nicole lets me. The cool thing about ice fishing is I don't have a boat to set up. I can literally go, if I, even if I have a couple hours, I can just go up to the little pond down the street. We can do some challenges. It's gonna be a fun winter, folks. We're gonna be toasty warm, and we have all of the gear ready to rock. The uh, next step is to, uh, once we have everything finally set up, is just to get everything in the truck, and that's it. Then we're ready to go at all times. Batteries will be inside being charged. The batteries for all the cameras and all that stuff. That stuff stays inside. But all this other stuff can remain ready to go in the truck for any point in time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fish and Grubs. Fish out! Whew. And I almost forgot. That's the whole reason why I turned the freaking camera back on. Everybody, if you don't know Jacob from the Chaos Paddlers, if you have not watched 
any of his videos, if you do not know his channel whatsoever, you need to go over there and subscribe and tell him I sent you because Jacob is such an amazing guy. First of all, his last name's Grubbs, so, I mean, come on. Uh, second, he really supports this channel. He's always commenting. He's freaking hilarious. Um, his videos aren't just about fishing. He does a ton of different stuff, and right now he actually has a giveaway going on uh, to win a giant, I think it's a, I, I don't really know the, it's a really strong magnet. Let's just call it that. Uh, it's a thousand pole or something. I believe it's a thousand pole. Jacob, tell me. Am I right? I don't know. Anyways, um, go over to his channel and share a couple of his old videos on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever your social media is and you're entered into the giveaway. It is pretty awesome. So, thousand pole magnet giveaway going on in Jacob's channel. Please do me a huge favor. Go over there and check him out. Jacob is, he supports everybody. It's not just this channel. He literally watches as many videos as he can. He comments and he puts up a ton of stuff. Um, he's always uploading and he is one of the greatest dudes I know. So get over there and subscribe to Jacob's channel. Damn it. Chaos Paddlers. You are the man. I need another sticker of yours so I can put it up on the bulletin board up there. Because uh, it deserves to be up there. And that goes for any of you. If you have stickers that you want me to throw up on the board, send them my way. I'll give you my address. Just get in touch with me. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Fish and Grubs, everybody. Fish out!